now we are ready for proving stone wire strass uh, okay so let us assume uh, yeah in, in this equivalent version so we assume i have a unital subalgebra which separates points and which is closed and i want to show it must be all of the continuous functions okay so take such an a so let a be a closed unital subalgebra of C of k, k is our compact Z, uh, which in addition separates the points of k. Which separates points of k. Oh, so it cannot be too small, the A, because it separates points, but we are claiming it must actually be very big, namely it must be everything. Okay, and so how are we going to, to show this? Okay, so um, what we want to see is that any element in C of k is in A. Uh, okay, but we do this in a way, so we take an F, okay, so take such an F, give an F in C of k, we want to show that it is in A, and actually, I mean, what we are going to do is to show that we can approximate it by elements from A as, as good as we want, and because then A is closed, it must also belong to A. Uh, okay, so we are actually we are, we are proving more the denseness, uh, but because in the course of the proof, uh, we will use the lemma before, it's good to know that our A is closed. Uh, okay, so it's, it's a bit... Yeah, mixed things are a little bit. Huh? Okay, so so we take an F in C of K, and what we want to show is that for any epsilon bigger than zero, uh, we can find a G in A, is there exists a G in A, such that the distance between G uh, and F is less than epsilon. So the distance between f and g, in the supremum's norm, of course, is less than epsilon. Oh, okay, so we can make epsilon as small as we want. So for each of them, so let's say, for example, for epsilon is 1 over n, we find uh, a gn, which is closer than 1 over n to f, and then, of course, the sequence gn converges to f, but if the gns are all in a, then the limit is also in a, because a is closed. Good, okay, and so how are we going to do this? Huh? So what is the situation? Maybe I draw a picture. Huh? So we have yeah, so we have here our set k, uh, and we have here somehow our, our function f. Uh, and we want to approximate this function by something in g. Okay, and we want to approximate this up to order epsilon. Huh? So we want to find a function g, which, is, which has distance epsilon from this function, so it must be some must be some so somehow in this epsilon tube. Huh? So this, so this this here is epsilon. Huh? So in both directions, it can only be epsilon away. Huh? So this here is my function f. Okay, now I want the g. Okay, and now I mean, what what can I do? I want the function g, which is as close as I want to this function f. Okay, and I mean only thing which I know about A is that at least uh, at two points I can more or less do what I want. Huh? And in particular I'm able to find a function in my set A which at two points, at two arbitrary points, really gives exactly the value of F. Huh? So this means for any, for any S and T I can find a function in my set A, which at least at this point S and at this point T is a very good approximation of F, namely it takes on exactly the same value. Uh, that's exactly what uh, this fact separating points gives me. Uh, we, we have to think a little bit that this really allows me to adjust things as I want at two points, but that, that's indeed the case. Uh, so I mean I, I get a function which here and here is okay, uh, but this function, I mean this, this might be a function like this. Huh? So this might be good at those two points, but of course there's no reason that it should be good at other points. Yeah, okay, but the idea is if it is good at this point, it's also good in the neighborhood because of continuity. 
Uh, so at least there is a neighborhood of those points where it's also still close, maybe not equal, but at least close to this function. Uh, and so this now smells a little bit like this compactness by open coverings. So at least if we do things right locally uh, with functions, then maybe we can clue them together uh, globally uh, because we can cover things uh, by a finite number of, of sets. Uh, and that's um, what we should do. And maybe you wonder why do I take here two points where I want to have it right and not just one point. And the reason is that I mean, I'm, I have to say somehow I'm not further away than epsilon, and this essentially are two conditions. Huh? Namely, I should be less than f plus epsilon, and I should be bigger than f minus epsilon, and those two things I have to control separately, huh? and I need two points for doing this. Good. Okay, but so let us first uh, check uh, wha what I have here. Huh? So namely, um, yeah, so I, I can consider arbitrary s and t, which are different, and at least for each of them, I get that such a function which is good at those two points. Uh, so, so I consider S and T in K, which are different. Uh, and because A separates points, A separates points, um, I know there is a function in A, let's call it H, which takes different values at this S and T. Uh, so there is an H in A such that H of S is not the same as H of T. Okay, but now I'm saying I can rescale things such that at those two points I can get arbitrary values. Uh, so here I just have H which has two different values, but now I can rescale things so such that I can get arbitrary values, say lambda and mu, at those points. Uh, so namely for this, I just do the following. Uh, so if I want to get lambda and mu as values, real numbers, uh, at those points, I take an h twiddle of v. I say this is equal to mu plus, and then I take lambda minus mu, h of v minus h of t divided by h of s minus h of t. Uh, so this is a rescaling. Uh, so this, this is now h. So this is defined for any v in k. Uh, so uh, for any v in k. Okay, and then this h twiddle is now also in a because I get it from the h, uh, so here's h of v. Uh, I mean, all the other h's are just uh, numbers, h applied at, at some fixed values. Uh, okay, so here's the h, this is a function, this is rescaled by something. Uh, okay, and then I'm adding constant functions. Uh, so this mu and also this term here, those are constant functions. Uh, but I have a unital subalgebra, a is a unital subalgebra, so multiplying with scalars uh, and adding constant functions uh, don't <coughs> lead out of, of the setting A. Uh, so this H twiddle is also uh, in my algebra A. Okay, and furthermore, this H twiddle now uh, takes on at these two points, uh, T and S, exactly the value which S has there. Uh, so namely, what is H twiddle at S? So if I put V equal to S, then here this is s, then I have hs minus ht divided by the same, so this is 1. I have here lambda minus mu, and this cancels the mu away, and I just uh, remain with the lambda. Huh? So h there is lambda. Okay, so I, I can just prescribe any lambda which I want. Uh, of course, in the next step, I will say this should be the same as f of s. Okay, but the h twiddle at t, what is this? Here I have h of t minus h of t, this is 0, this goes away, and I just have the mu. Uh, so that's the usual uh, linear interpolation uh, between uh, functions. Uh, okay, so this means I can find a function in A which takes on at those two points arbitrary values, and so I can say it should take on at S the value f of S and at T the value f of T. Uh, so this means whenever I have two points, S and T, which are different, 
I find a function, which of course depends on S and T. So I put an S and T as a subscript there. Important point is it's a function in A and it has the property that at least at the point S and at the point T it's a very good approximation of f because at the point s it has the value f of s and at the point t it has the value f of t. Uh, so I'm just choosing here lambda equal to f of s and mu equal to f of t. Good, okay, uh, so I, I find a function like this, so this here would be my function f of s, uh, comma t. Yeah, good, and now um, this function is good, let's say, at t, uh, at t is, is good, and because my function is continuous, it is also good in the neighborhood. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's still in, in, in this epsilon neighborhood uh, for, for some neighborhood here. Okay, and I want to control, but I, I want to extend uh, this to a function which is good everywhere. And the idea is that I should put together uh, pieces of functions which are good locally uh, to a global function. And I can do this by taking the minimum or the maximum of functions which I have. Huh? Because before we saw, if I have functions in A, I can take their minimum and their maximum huh? of, a, of a finite number. Huh? I can take minimum of two of them, but iterating I can take the minimum of a finite number of, of functions. Huh? Okay, and so I mean, if I take the minimum of things, <coughs> this will allow me um, to control somehow the upper bounds. Huh? Okay, and I have to deal with the lower bound later and this means I, I need two points. So first for, for the first argument I'm fixing let's say the S. Huh? I mean I can do this for any S and T, now I'm fixing the S and I want to look uh, how things change if I'm arguing with, with T. Huh? Okay, so I fix uh, S and then I want to make things right in T, uh, so I'm taking, I mean, at, at T, for, for, for any T now, I have a function which is good at T, but it's also good in a neighborhood. Uh, so I define this neighborhood as U of T, those elements in K for which the function F S comma T uh, at V is less than F of V plus epsilon. Uh, so, I mean, I, I want to be below f plus epsilon, uh, so below this, this guy here. Uh, I mean, that, that's half of that what I want to achieve. Uh, at the end, I want to be between this. I'm now just trying to get something which is below this. At this point, of course, because I'm exactly f of, f of uh, t, I know that I'm in this set. Uh, okay. And then, this u of t is an open set. Uh, now openness comes into the game. And why is it an open set? Because it is defined in terms of a condition of continuous functions. I mean, those functions are continuous here. Uh, and so, I mean, I can write this as the pre-image uh, of an open set. Uh, so, those are guys for which this here I mean, th this distance here is less than epsilon, which is an open set, and then I have the pre-image, yeah? and then the pre-image of open sets is open. Huh? So this, this here is an open set, and T is contained in this. Huh? So this here is an open neighborhood of T. Huh? So this means T is in this set, and it's, it's an open set. But then if I take now all U of T's together, then of course I have an open cover of K. Uh, I have a cover of K because I mean each T is contained in its set U T. Uh, okay, so this means the union of all U T, T running over K, is an open cover of K. Uh, okay, uh, so this means for each T I can locally, I have, I have a neighborhood of T where things are right. Okay, and then I take all this ut together, they, they cover my k. Okay, and now I can now use the fact that k is compact, and so this means whenever I have an open cover of k, I can find a finite subcover. Uh, so this means I don't have to take all these infinitely many ut's uh, to deal with this, but it's, it's, it's enough to take finitely many of them. Uh, so k is compact. 
this means I have a finite subcover. Finite subcover. Uh, so this means I have only I need only finitely many t's. Let me call them t1 up to tn in the set K such that their neighborhoods U T I cover already uh, the whole K. Uh, so K is actually a subset of this finite cover of the U T I. I is running from 1 uh, up to n. Okay, yeah, but this means I have now um, covered K by finitely many TIs. Uh, so for example, I mean, let's say this, this is one of the TIs. Uh, and so I can take the function corresponding to this TI. Uh, I mean, I can take this in some interval UTI. So this guy has an interval UTI. That's the interval where this function here is better than this guy here. Uh, so this, this is, I mean, this part of the function. Uh, yeah, so here it is better. So, so here. I mean, this, this is this. And may, maybe if this function goes back again later, it will end here somewhere. Huh? Okay, and here, I mean, I have other parts of this function, but they don't, I mean, I mean I'm not interested in those. Huh? So, I mean, here I have really a neighborhood of Ti, and in this neighborhood, this function f of Sti is a good one. Huh? So, this is less than this. Okay, yeah, but then I have other Ti minus 1. Uh, for this, I also have a function. I have a different function which goes to the same point S uh, and which at this point goes to this. Uh, so here I have another function which maybe goes uh, like this. Uh, so this here would be f of S T i. Let's, let's call this T3 and let's say this is T2. Huh? Uh, so this is uh, T3 and this here is f of S T2. Uh, the S is the same. I mean, all of them go through this point, uh, but then they go through another point uh, at of the function f. This goes through this one. And here, this is now, this has also a neighborhood where it is okay, uh, so where it is less than this, so namely this part here. Uh, so this, this has also a neighborhood here for which it is okay. Uh, and so you see, I mean, uh, this function here is good in this part here. This function here is good in this part. And I mean, they, they cover at least this part. And then there will be other TIs, and in the end, you cover everything. Huh? So you have your K, you have it covered by sets, which cover this K. And in each of those open sets, you have a function which is good, which is closer than epsilon, at least in one direction, to the function f. OK, but now you should take a function uh, which works everywhere. Huh? And for this, uh, you take the minimum of all those functions. Huh? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, because you know, I mean, you have at least one which is smaller than f plus epsilon. So if you take the minimum uh, over all which you have, then, they will then this will also be smaller. Huh? You only need a function in this first step which is better than f plus epsilon. Huh? And in the neighborhood, you have at least one but of course, you also have other functions around, which you don't know. But so if you take the minimum over the functions which you have, then at least the one which is good in this neighborhood, uh, this will guarantee that the minimum also is good in this neighborhood. Good. OK. Huh? So we have here uh, this finite subcover. And then I take Hs as the minimum over this Fs. T i one less uh, between i and n. Good. Okay. And maybe I should let us take a short break here, and then uh, we continue with this argument. <coughs>